Hey, hey, it's TDA, and welcome back to Dyson Sphere Program. This is episode 25 of our super proliferation run. And yeah, I'm, I'm almost tempted to just make the rest of this episode us looking at our awesome sphere being slowly constructed. Well, I say slowly, but there's nothing slow about this sphere being constructed because we are firing about 30 rockets per second at it and uh, the same amount of rays, uh, sorry, um, solar sails. As you can see, we have huge amounts. All these little wisps are dozens and dozens of solar sails being absorbed into the system. Um, and yeah, we're going to have a pretty nice sphere with a lot of power really soon. So yeah, nothing slow about that. But anyway, what we are going to do is because we are not going to just look at this being constructed. Um, what we are going to do is build towards white science. And honestly, it's not the most complicated thing to do. Um, if you look up the recipe, all we need to do is have the other colors of science, which we kind of already do. So it's only a small jump towards the last part of the end game if you just want to get your white science done. Uh, research the technology all the way in the back. So this says mission completed. You only need 4,000 white signs for that. And after that, you could stop the game if you want. Um, a lot of people do. But if you want to go really end game, then you can start researching all these nice little things with white research. They're infinite research. So you can do this over and over and over again. Get as many drones as you want, basically. Uh, I don't recommend getting too much because they will break your system. Um, but specifically what a lot of people find very nice to do, and I can totally understand, is um, have a high level of a veins utilization. You can research this over and over again as well. The research cost will go up. But the whole point of this is that basically at some point your um, resources will mine at a incredibly uh, high speed. I mean, it increases your mining speed, but most importantly, it will make sure your mines actually never run out, basically, because of course, the consumption at some points gets so low that you would probably need the rest of your life uh, in order to deplete one single node. And well, yeah, we gamers, we are not infinite, so that kind of by default makes the uh, resource infinite because yeah you're never going to be able to deplete them in order to do that like i said and i think i mentioned this in the previous episode um we are actually going to make the builds in such a way that they're scalable um we already have some builds so we might want to tweak them a little bit here and there but other than that um, i do want to make sure that you guys can actually work towards your white signs and scale it up as far as you want to go and the reason for that is that due to the size of the builds and due to the spheres and things like that, um, lower end systems, and even if you have a pretty decent PC, you will start to notice it. Um, yeah, the game at some point just, just gives such a high toll on your system that if you are going to go for insanely large builds, it stops somewhere. Basically, your FPS gets just unbearably low. So... In order to avoid you guys not being able to play along with me, I am going to make sure you have blueprints where you can scale it up or down depending on what your system can handle. Now, let's jump to it. Now, although it breaks my heart to turn the camera away from our awesome Dyson Sphere, we are going to have to start building and we can't do that while looking at the sky. So, we are going to place down a ring of ray receivers and we are going to do that where is the real question um as always i'm doing this on the fly so i think we should probably do it around here if i'm not mistaken let's check you double check that should be in the middle-ish of this ring yeah uh, it's not actually exactly the middle so let's remove that and place it in hello okay um is this where we want to build this though i am not sure uh, uh, let's let's go with it it's it's not it doesn't come that close um step one we need ray receivers which we apparently don't have but i'm pretty sure we requested them so let's see ray receivers ray receivers where are you there you go well we are going to need slightly over 100 i think this should be more than enough for now um we're actually going to make two rings, but we once again are going to do it in the smart way. Um, 
you can see how often I have actually placed these things down. I actually need to look for them. How are we going to make this particular build though? I think hmm, we are going to have to leave ourselves some room. I'm actually not sure if it's going to fit. Is this going to fit? Hmm, maybe. Hmm. We do it like this. Yeah, this is probably more convenient. Now, sorry for mumbling all the way there, but I think if we do it like this, this will allow us to do a nice little trick. Okay, so we are going to have to place down the ray receivers. And in order to make ray receivers do anything useful, other than power generation, is you um, is by switching the mode. Um, also, if you want them to actually do what they're supposed to do, you should make sure that they're aligned. Now they're aligned, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, sorry, getting... Um, they're still not aligned, are they? Uh, yeah, they are. Never mind. That's just my mind playing tricks on me. Anyway, what we need to do is we need to set these to photon generation. And as you can see, this is painfully slow. Two and a half per minute is not a lot. You, there's basically two ways to speed that up. The first way is pretty simple. Just let this run. As you can see, the continuous receiving buff is going up. And as you can see, the production speed is also going up as this ticks up. So in the end, this is going to be about 20 times as fast. And it's still going to be terribly slow, but it will definitely be a lot faster than it is right now. Now, the second way to speed this up is actually plug in a graviton lens. This will insanely increase the production of the ray receiver and there's pretty much no reason not to do this it, it's a little bit it, it, it will give us a little bit of a hassle in terms of actually making sure we supply this with graviton lenses but it's definitely worth the effort now um the, it will actually consume the lens by the way but it's only going to consume it at 0 0.1 per minute or in other words one lens will last 10 full minutes so you can do the math, um, one lens per 10 minutes, that's a negligible term, uh, amount of lenses that we're going to need. So there's not really any reason to do that. It will just be a little bit inconvenient in terms of how we will need to place our stuff in order to actually get that to do what we want to do. Now, what else? What, um, we are going to have to place down a lot of these. One thing to note if you're building your sphere, especially if you're not building the sphere as fast as I am, um, I have a sphere right now which is capable of generating about 4.8 gigawatts. And as you can see, we're no, drawing nowhere near that. If you go over this number, then your additional rate receives will actually be sharing all the input power. That means that that's basically equivalent of your um, system running at low power. And what I mean by low power is that if you have an entire facility working at 50% power, you will actually get 50% of the output. So that's not something you want. Uh, and it also means that basically you have half that facility working for nothing. Same thing here. There's no reason to build more ray receivers than your sphere can handle. That said, we are, and that's a good excuse to look at our sphere. We are constructing our sphere at a massive speed. So you can actually see it ticking up as we are going along. So the um, sphere power will not be an issue in our case. And damn, that looks good. Anyway back on topic what we want to do is we are going to have to set this up we are going to have to supply it with lenses and we're going to have to have the actual output go back into our little thing over here now i'm actually thinking we should probably construct this a little bit differently than i've placed them now and i'm sorry about fiddling all around but um yeah let's see we need to be a little bit smart about this so if we place this like this, can we actually fit one more here? Yes, we can. Now that is interesting because that might allow us to do this. We could have a belt going back like this. It doesn't actually matter, I guess, in which direction it goes, but let's, let's go with this for now. Um, yeah. Something like that. Uh, same thing on this side. 
is this counting as part of the new, the other part of the grid? I think it is. So we want to make sure we're not getting conflicted with the um, the blueprint lines or the meridians, uh, equators. No, it's not equators, meridians. Fault lines, fault lines. That's what the word I was looking for. Um, there we go. Now this is the outgoing belt. And set this to photon generation as well. So the, the photons should be out here. They will probably be going in here. Uh, let's have this receive the critical photons. And we will have to request some of these. We don't need a lot of them, but we do need some. Oh, you're actually not set to photon generation. I was like, why is there no, why is there no photons in here? And that's because it's not actually currently working. This one is working really slow. As you can see, it also depends on where the sun is, or, or at least our Dyson Sphere in this case. Uh, and considering it's on the wrong side of the planet, it's barely getting any reception over here. But it is sticking out above the planet a little bit. And this is why you want to build these things close to the poles. Because they will stick out a little bit, and this basically means you have optimal uptime on these things. So you can get the continuous receiving buff as high as you can possibly get it. Um, that's it. Lenses. I think we should be able to fit one of these things in between here and then we can supply the lenses like this. And it will nicely be hidden under the thing. I'm not actually setting the... Um, whatchamacallits. Uh, let, me, let me see, let me think here for a moment. So if we are going to be placing these things down, I think I probably want them on these lines like this. And then the same one over here. And we'll nicely align it to the grid, which is always something I like. You could probably fit in a few more receivers if you put them at minimal distance. Um, but there is sometimes something to be said for form over function. And I think this works well enough, to be honest, for our purposes. Now, um, I'm actually going to build two more. And why? Because it's these ones don't lend themselves for copy pasting that well. If we do it like this, that should work, I think, a little better. So, so then what we want to do is we are going to have a belt that goes like this. We are also going to have a belt that goes like, no, nope, no, no, not in there. Out, out, like that. Um, we are going to have a splitter once again over here. A little bit hard to see where we're placing them the splitter if we're doing it like this but it's okay it's okay it's okay i hope i'm not getting you guys seasick by turning oh wait this is not on the grid there we go now uh, it's still not on yeah that was actually in the correct place okay um, 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 um yes and then this 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 one this one and then we have an outgoing belt like this and then we have an Belt like, no, 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 not like that. Like this, like that, and like that. And then I think, are these all set to photon generation? Yes, they are. I think if we now use our the power of copy paste, we should be able to copy paste it like this. Uh, am I forgetting anything? No power poles needed for this actually. I think, right? These, these things don't use power. Do they use power? No, they don't use power. Do they? No, they don't. I, I, I For some reason, I, I thought when I first started playing this game that these things actually used power. So I had power poles all over the place when building these things. And ever since, I, I am always confused. Do these things need power or not? Do these things need power or not? I definitely don't need the extra square there if I'm going to copy paste efficiently. There we go. Um, I'm actually on the grid there as well. Is that going to cause me any problems? Actually, I don't think so. So we should be fine. Um, that actually means we could also move the line out one more, but... Yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing is, uh, when you place them down like this, the, this, the um, ray receivers are nicely aligned to the grid. That also makes sure that... They're nicely aligned to the grid, assuming you copy-paste them correctly. This game does need an undo button. If that is something they will add in one of the next updates, I'm going to be so happy. 
There we go. The copy paste function is wonderful though, so that's that's definitely more useful than the undo button, but sometimes the undo button could be so useful, especially when you're placing down larger blueprints. Having to delete an entire large blueprint is quite annoying. So I actually, when I place down larger builds, for example, some of my own, uh, if you get them um, just one... Hello? Oh, actually, I apparently clicked on this. I was about to say, what is this? Uh, but yeah, if I place down larger blueprints, I actually tend to save my game just before, just in case I misalign slightly. So I don't need to take down the entire thing. Oh man, there I go again. There I go again. But that's a good excuse. We can look at our sphere. Look! <laughs> look at the speed at which this is being constructed. Uh, you can pretty much see the shape of the sphere starting to form. Um, yeah, okay. Sorry. Amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to start building in a system where we don't have a sphere, just so I don't get distracted every two minutes by the sphere. Um, also really happy about my new system being able to handle the sphere. It's nothing worse than building an awesome sphere and kind of seeing your game turn into a slideshow. Which, honestly, is something that will definitely happen if you don't have a high-end system at some point. Um, helps if you make this go the correct direction. Um, this is actually... It doesn't make sense to build a belt here, but but eh. well, actually, this is a good way to to allow stuff to go through if that is what you need to do. Although there will be this belt, but yeah, okay. Let's see. Okay, so something like this. So this end will have the uh, critical photons coming in, as you can see. We are already doing exactly that. Quite a nice amount of photons in here already, 139, and now we have an entire circle full of these things um one thing that is annoying me though that this thing is not in the middle so we are going to fix that we are going to take that down because we do want our builds to be nicely aligned and i can't have this ils be off center there we go so i think this is the middle right is this the middle looks like the middle uh yeah it is the middle actually you can tell TVA because it's on this middle line. That's why you aligned it to the grid, remember? Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so um, there we go. There we go. And there we go. There we go. We could actually proliferate here as well. So we might as well go and do that. So we have this. We are going to have to have some lenses in here, which are gone because I removed them, but we can put some new ones in. There we go. Let's make sure we actually put them on the belt straight away because we are now actually operating. Now, you can see the um, these ones are operating at about three per minute and these ones have lenses and these are operating at about seven per minute. So like I said, double the speed, really efficient, really nice. And there's no reason not to do that. Are these lenses actually proliferated? Um, they aren't, so why are these not proliferated? Hmm, I'm not actually sure, to be honest. Let's actually remove them from the belt for a moment. Um, because, to be honest, I'm not actually entirely sure if proliferation actually does anything if you put proliferated lenses in these things. Why are these red? Is this just a light? Hmm. Anyway. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to have to have some of these, not that many actually, but might as well request 500 so we don't have the ships flying up and down too often. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to... Oh, okay, I should have done it the other way around, but that's okay. We have plenty of these things, so shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Um, the fact that it only requested 2,000 of these actually implies we might have to expand our warper production somewhere along those lines a little bit uh, that is actually something i will need to mention later on in this episode as well but for now let's make sure we actually mm, there, there, we actually do have one problem in terms of this proliferation is that we don't want to go outside of this belt uh, and that is because that will give us issues with the blueprint so we are going to have to do something along these lines and that is just do something like this 
And there we go. And then just we'll do the same thing over here. Let's go down first. There we go. Up oh, and there. And then we can do a little. Actually, it's just this is. Mm, we're actually going to flip this one around, I think. There we go. And why? Because we actually need some room for this to go up. There we go. And then, just because we can, and I like symmetry, we will take this down and back in again. There we go. So, nothing actually proliferated for the moment, but it will be proliferated in a second. I'm actually not going to worry about it and just put this on the belt. That should be fine. And there we go. All right. Um, this is a very simple build that actually allows you to gather these critical photons. Assuming, of course, you actually make the other half the build as well, because now we have all these photons stuck on the belt. Um, this is going to be not enough for the full belt of white science. You will actually need to build this twice. Luckily, you have two poles on your planet. So I highly recommend that you build this not just on one side of the planet, but also on the other one. That will actually give you more than enough in terms of how much production you need for your uh, critical photons. But it's better to have too much than too few. Now, I'm actually going to do exactly that. Also put in some foundations and things like that. And then we're going on because we are. there's actually two more things that we are going to build in this episode. There we go. We now have the second ring completed as well. And the nice thing is one of my um, blueprints for power around the domes actually fits nicely alongside it. So uh, this is, of course, way more power than these uh, three power poles and uh, spray painters need. But... Um, you will probably need power elsewhere on your planet. We will especially need power on this planet. So there's a reason I built this. Uh, and in the meanwhile, we actually got some nice achievements as well. As well. It's one of my previous playthroughs where I went uh, in the game as well. Apparently the achievements were uh, shut down. Actually got the uh, you win the game achievement in my pre previous playthrough as well. Even though I've already completed it several times. But anyway, uh, it's a nice testament to the fact that we are just starting to build our sphere and we got these achievements so working like intended i would say um the rockets are actually done in the sphere as well so as you can see there's no more rockets being fired at our sphere at the moment all the nodes are in place we simply need to fill everything up with the solar sails and considering we apparently already shot more than 100,000 at this sphere and it's not even i don't think it's half full by the looks of it um, that just shows how much elements actually go into even a fairly simple sphere as we have here. So, yeah. Um, there's one more thing. So, I actually had to redesign the spray coders over here because this belt that is actually on the um, vault line was giving me issues with connecting to the spray painter. No idea why, but that's the way it is. So, uh, make sure you place it correctly. I Well, actually... It won't let you place the blueprint in any other way uh, that I've built it now. Because otherwise you will get an error for the vault lines. Um, one more thing that's worth noting is that it is definitely worth spraying your lenses. I was testing it out. Uh, as you can see, this has a sprayed lens in it. It's only showing for some reason that it has two sprays on it. Even though all the things have three. And it's doing that everywhere. So even if I put in a fully proliferated s stack... I think it only. Oh, actually, no. That does that. It's not does that. Doesn't work like that. Let's um. Let's look like this. There we go. Um. Let's get this completely out. Uh, can we can get it completely out? Oh, we can't. No, we can't. Well, we can actually. But he, for some reason, it's only showing two bars, even if I take everything out. As you can see, I'm refilling it now with completely proliferated lenses and it's still showing with two marks. Anyway, not sure why it does that, but you can see it gives you a maximum power output of plus 250%, while the unproliferated version only gave you a bonus of 100%. So definitely worth doing that. It will increase your output of critical photons by a lot. 
Uh, however, you still need the power in order to do that. So right now I have two of these rows requiring 42 gigawatts worth of energy, even though it can only supply 8.6. And that has, oh, actually now it does show with three. Okay, so the maximum amount is 300%. So basically it's three times as large of a buff as the unproliferated version gives you. So that actually means you can get away with just one of these rows of ray receivers rather than two. And it will also mean that you're requiring way more power from your Dyson Sphere than it can probably generate. You do not need to have this fully up to 43 gigawatts like mine is currently requested um, a fraction of that will be fine um, basically it is designed in such a way that you can pretty much do it uh, with two of these working at normal power with 100% bonus rather than 300% bonus so yeah just just take that into account don't try to optimize this uh, there's no reason to do so just a single one of these builds will be enough now there's a few problems I'm starting to have now in the, my game, and that is the original system uh, systems that we've actually put miners on and things like that are currently running out of um, minerals, uh, iron, copper, things like that. Um, it's not like my entire production chain is breaking down, but we are definitely going to have to build more mines. Specifically, I am actually requesting particle colliders on this planet, which are currently not being built. I might have set a few particle colliders on other planets i'll have to look into what's the problem but um yeah don't forget that at some point in the game you will go through a phase where you're going to have to rebuild some of your production facilities well not so the facilities themselves but at least the um, miners and things like that will have to be replaced because yeah you are drawing a lot of resources for building a dyson sphere you can see all these soda cells flying past so you will need to resupply I'm going to do just that, so I'll be right back. And as our sphere has slowly started to come to its completion, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting quite close at the moment. Um, I fixed the supply chain issue that we had. It apparently turned out that the free materials that are needed to make particle colliders were actually not built, being built enough. So I wasn't actually producing particle colliders in my um, malls so fix that issue i just made one more of the uh, small builds that we've made before that i think produces something like three frame materials per second nothing major place that down make sure it was supplied and that is it so second thing i did was make this little addition to our polar hub over here this is a very simple setup of 20 exactly 20 particle colliders which are turning our critical photons into antimatter at a pretty high speed um, it's hard to tell because i actually had to split the belt into several pieces um, but it's actually producing almost one full belt of antimatter slightly under that actually um, but yeah this is a build that you might want to build on two different planets um, mainly because we have so many ray receivers and so much um, critical photons coming from that as you can see we are actually producing more than we are um, using uh, and antimatter is not just used for white science it's also used for antimatter rods so that is something we will probably build in the next episode just because we can but for now um, this is the first part that we step that we need to set towards white science now as you can see um, there's several different belts and why did I have why did I split up these belts I actually have a belt with different materials on it so that some people would probably be yelling at me in the comments by now. You can't put antimatter and hydrogen on the same belt. What are you thinking? Well, actually you can. Because the reason I can is we, we are pretty certain that we are actually going to export all the, all the hydrogen from this thing. So this should never back up. As you can see, we have actually produced more antimatter than we have produced hydrogen. So it shouldn't be any issue there. Um... And the reason it's on the same belts is just for convenience. It's actually, you could put a third belt in here um, for the hydrogen, but for some reason, it doesn't actually allow the particle colliders to reach to that third belt. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I think it has something to do with the poles, because as you can see, this is placed as close as it can get, and you would expect it to be able to go three out. But you can't, and that's why it's on the same belt. Anyway. Um, yeah, nothing really special going on here. Just a simple proliferation ring as well. I kind of like how it looks, to be honest. 
And I've decided to use white foundation for all these sections that we're dedicating to white science production. So that's the critical photons, it's the part, the ray receivers, things like that. So that's why I'm using it. Uh, the foundation is slightly different. Kind of like how it looks, honestly. So hope you like it. Um, that said, we are still not done for this episode. One more step, it's going to be very straightforward, so I'm just going to build it and show it to you, but it is quite vital that we do so. And there we go. How is this for our little crown piece to our build for today? I have now constructed 360 science facilities in order to create 30 white signs per second. Now, of course, we're, we have nowhere near the supply to make that 30 white signs, but... Uh, I do get to kind of demonstrate to you what it looks like initially because like you can see all these buildings are actually currently working and that is because we already had a supply of all these signs waiting from what we've constructed before even though it was constructed at a very low speed. If you take several hours to get here it will actually buffer up and as you can see we have a nice flow of white signs going to the ILS. Now, like I said, this build is relatively straightforward, although it's not the most trivial to build. Why not? Well, it actually requires six inputs to make white science. So five colors of science, as well as antimatter, six inputs. Then you need somewhere for the white science to go out. So there's a little bit spaghetti going on, but I don't think that can be avoided. And um, yeah, proliferation going on on all the science just in case. Um, of course, proliferating your science does actually work, as you can see, so that is very much worth it, considering the amount of resources that goes into white science. Um, and actually, proliferating the science that comes out is worth it as well, and now I say that, I don't think I actually put in those proliferators. Nope, I didn't, so we'll have to fix that in a moment. Um, other than that, anything else? else going on um yeah there's a little belt with um warpers going here because we actually are requesting warpers over here but on the other side all the way over here we are actually having to belt in the warpers because of course five different types of signs actually make sure that fills up all our slots um the build is kind of split in two not really for any specific reason other than the fact that that helps out the way the belt looks um, um, or are organized so um, yeah pretty straightforward like I said but it's a really amazing build and I also think that these builds combined are actually pretty awesome to look at we have some power we have all the ray receivers then we actually turn in uh, we're actually low on power but then we turn in those um, critical photons into antimatter over here and then we actually transport them right onto these belts and then we start making white signs and I have to say it looks pretty amazing all these white science facilities so yeah we have that going for us now there's one more thing we need to do to actually make use of that science and that will require a trip back to our home system actually before we leave our system just a small moment of appreciation for our now almost finished sphere as you can see there's still a few wisps of solar cells being absorbed but other than that it's pretty much done as it stands um one thing to why i wanted to note about that is you might actually want to turn off your solar sail em real launchers even though this thing looks really cool um yeah this is just basically shooting a lot of solar sails at a sphere that's no longer consuming them so if you reach this point with your sphere you could consider expanding your sphere adding more pieces to it so the solar sails have somewhere to go um, or turning off your EM rail ejectors so you're not wasting sills because these things, well, they give energy, but it's not necessarily something we are using. Like I said, it's completely up to you. You can actually also just leave, leave it on and uh, mass massive amounts of solar sills in your um, swarm, but that will kind of be wasteful in terms of resources. So that's really up to you, just something to consider before you leave a system with an active sphere that you're actively building. All right, let's jump to our home system. And there we are, back on Heli. Remember this planet where we built all this nice little early game builds and then we upgraded all of them and we had a lot of fun. It's a quite a busy planet, honestly. I actually had to put in some additional power to make sure everything kept functioning after everything was automated, uh, activated at the same time because we were suddenly starting to use everything again. So you can see the science builds that we've made quite a few episodes ago is still working and we are making all types of science of course nowhere near 
in the amounts that we actually need it but um, for now still working just fine and this means that we can actually produce an infinite amount of white signs at the moment that's not really why we're here though let me check on which pole it is it's over there what we have to do on this planet is actually change up our little pole built over here and hello autosave of course of course the autosave had to come in just now what we actually have to do is we are going to place down a little helper facility i might actually have a blueprint for that but uh oh okay apparently i am out of ILS. i'm not sure when that happened um let me see this is our mall of everything there we go let's take a few maybe 70 is a bit overkill but okay um at least it's enough for what we want to do for now we are going to be building just a random ILS over here. We are going to set this to request all of that. But for the moment, actually, we're not going to set it to request. We are going to set this all to zero because we have a lot of signs in here. And then we are going to transport all of that into here. And we are actually going to have a bit of overflow because for some reason there's more than 10,000 in this building. Interesting how the game allows that. But anyway, there we go. This should be transported off planet pretty soon because of course we are producing white signs and to speed that up we should probably put some vessels in here. There we go. Those won't really do any good unless we power them. But anyway, this should... Uh, well, that's not going to do anything considering we don't have any... Warpers in here either. So let's do that like that. I'm actually out of a lot of stuff by now. But that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so that's some of those. Now we have warpers. Now we have vessels and we have it powered. So that, as you can see, should mean that we are going to export all of that stuff pretty quickly now. And there's actually all of this stuff on the belts as well that we need to get rid of that we can in a moment um i'm just gonna delete one of those to make some room we don't necessarily care about a little bit of science going to waste but we shouldn't overdo that wrong side let's do that from this side there we go let's empty the belts and i'll actually do that for all belts just a moment there we go, all cleared out. Now all we need to do is set this to white science, make sure we demand it everywhere, either locally or remotely. In this case, remote is obviously going to do the best job. And as you can see, we already produce quite a lot of white science, so that is really good. Now we of course also need to adapt this so it will actually go on the belt and we can easily do that. We might as well use all the belts, not that it really matters, but hey. There's belts, so might as well use them. Looks kind of cool though, having uh, the white signs on all these different belts. Now what you do probably want to do is kind of upgrade this in such a way that you actually make sure that you can process all of that white signs. I don't like the buildings clipping through each other, so if you're wondering why I'm not using the maximum height, that is why. Actually still low on power on this planet, so we'll definitely need to add in some more dischargers, maybe even add in something to burn graphite. So several things we can do, but we'll probably just add in some dischargers. Um, a new habit that I actually got into is placing charging facilities on some of the uh, smaller planets, the mining planets, etc. You tend to have more energy than you really need on those planets anyway. And by placing some charging units there, you have just a random place where you can charge your items. Actually need more of these uh, science facilities. Um, you have a place where you can add in more of those. And it's a really convenient way to kind of um, buffer your power production. And that allows you to kind of randomly put in more power uh, production or yeah, discharging facilities on planets where you end up needing them. Like for example, this planet over here. Now, I'm going to finish this, but I guess you get the point. Um, there's really nothing else we should do, but there's one thing I would like to discuss just briefly. So, if you want to just go for the win the game, save, hello, autosave. 
I'm not actually sure if I changed anything to my autosave set settings. Seems that it's doing it more often. You could just research this. This doesn't actually give you anything, but it is, does give you the pop up hey, you win the game. Um, but in terms of why to research, well, the few things that I recommend you go for first are probably the drone engine as well as the communication control just more drones and faster drones is probably a good thing if you're making larger builds now remember you can research these things multiple times the cost will go up though another thing is the drive engine just getting one level of it is very convenient and one more thing that you probably want to research pretty quickly is this one and this is uh, something that will actually allow your logistics stations to actually function as stackers uh, even just the first level is really convenient because it will actually allow your station to stack to two. Um, and then just adding in one more stacker will actually mean you have a high uh, four stacked type of belt. Um, you could also go for these. Um, of course, you should probably go for these. But things like uh, get, just getting the first level of pretty much every white science is really good. It just speeds up everything by a lot. And of course, this is the one that everyone wants to go for. Veins utilization is something you will probably want to go for uh, early on as well. Now, as you can see, even though we're, we haven't actually focused on upgrading our science production at all, this is just the production we started out with. You can see we have a ton of white science production uh, research. That was the word I was looking for, research going on already. Stacking these up to max height is actually slightly annoying. So it's hard to see when I actually reach max height. So flying fixes that problem. More drones. Yay, more drones. You know why we need more drones? To build things more convenient in uh, gas giants. That's pretty much the only reason. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to finish this up. Um, I'm not going to have to sit through me building another few hundred of these. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. And make sure you join in for the next few episodes where we're really going to be upgrading our science production. And then you can really see this facility working at max speed. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will catch you in the next one.